With time ticking on, we need to make some distance on our Kimberley trip. We leave Camden Harbour aiming to reach Prudhoe Islands in Montague Sound in five days time, visiting Hanover Bay, Careening Bay and Biggie Island along the way. We head into Rogers Strait, a treacherous stretch of shallow reef-strewn water. We aim to transit the strait at high water slack to minimise the current and to ride the start of the ebb tide through to deeper water. Our timing was perfect and the waters of the strait ended up being calm and placid. Once into the deeper water, the sea breeze came in at 10 to 15 knots, giving us a welcome push towards Hanover Bay. We hook another shark on the trolling line, and whilst hauling it in, we are boarded by fisheries to inspect our licenses and catch. This was the first of many such inspections on our trip. Hanover Bay ends at the aptly named One Tree Island. We anchor in Hanover Bay and share the anchorage with the fisheries boat for the night. In the morning we head up the nearby sidearm in the hope of finding fresh water for a wash. Sometimes a freshwater bath needs a lot of this sort of stuff. So this is Hanover Inlet, beautiful little creek coming in. Quite a lot of rocks in the water before it so you can't really get the dinghy very close for refilling water, but it's a beautiful spot. Lovely paper parks, cliffs and gorgeous scenery and fresh running water. And we'll probably just have a bath here. Always nice to have a nice freshwater bath. It is. This one's Hanover Creek coming, well I assume it's called Hanover Creek, uh, at the end of the inlet off Hanover Bay. Careful the little fish don't bite you. Absolutely beautiful and it's full of life. Getting a little bit of laundry done, the cool way. The water was alive with small fish and freshwater shrimp. The main beach of Hanover Bay is extensive, but it is difficult to land on due to the soft shan and shoaling water. Heading on out of Hanover Bay, we bypass the Prince Regent River due to lack of time on our way to Careening Bay. Well, we left Hanover Bay 
day with uh, a good sailing wind this morning um, and we've been sailing up to the uh, entrance of the Prince Regent River before we turn down towards Careening Bay. As you can see the wind is just about died now which is pretty typical of uh, Kimberley waters. You get a nice morning breeze or strong wind sometimes and it's a strong wind warning today but uh, it came in lighter than they expected and then you end up with very little wind around midday and sometimes you can end up with um, uh, quite a brisk sea breeze for the afternoon coming in from the west or northwest. Anyway, beautiful day and we're on our way to Greening Bay. Passing Bat Island, we head into Port Nelson, keeping a sharp lookout for the many navigational dangers along the way. We arrive at careening bay on a falling tide, so anchor out instead of our plan to careen the boat on the beach. The area has an extensive shoaling beach with a magnificent stand of ancient cycads at its head. Uh, you know, there's the historic mermaid tree here at uh, Careening Bay, but people seem to take that as an uh, invitation to leave their own graffiti on the poor old boabs. Don't think this is all a very good example. The bay was given its name by the explorer Philip Parker King, who, ex who careened his boat, the Mermaid, for badly needed repairs back in 1820. Uh, it's easy to tell when you're coming to one of the iconic uh, locations in the Kimberley. Uh, the Mermaid Boab Tree, uh, this path is awfully well worn. Not what you really expect to find the Kimberleys is a steel walkway uh, here to protect the roots and the longevity of the tree. The crew of Her Majesty's Cutter the Mermaid were instructed to leave proof of their visit and so carved the boat's name into the stem of this large boab tree. The watercourse inland from the tree dries up early in the dry season and by August is completely without water. With the tides against us we set off in the dark to use the last of the ebb tide out of Port Nelson before pushing tide for the next six hours on the way to Biggie Island. Southeasterly blowing at the moment. Uh, the forecast was 15 to 20 knots. That's the Kimberley for you. If they forecast 20 knots and uh, you get uh, five. But uh, sometimes it is very, very strong too. Uh, so you have to be careful. Uh, we're on our way to Biggie Island this morning. Um, a nice long sail, 35 nautical miles. We're pushing tide a little bit to start off with because the tides aren't quite right. But at the moment we've got uh, only about 0.2, one or 0.2 of a knot against us, so it's not too bad. And we're under sail in a five to ten knot breeze. 
Uh, so hopefully uh, this afternoon we'll be in Big Yard. A short time later the wind picks up and the tide starts to strengthen against us. Before long the wind increases to 20 knots gusting 25 and with wind against tide becomes quite rough and uncomfortable. Along the way we see whales breaching in the distance, a magnificent sight but also quite nerve wracking. Six hours later the tide finally turns in our favour with the wind moderating as we pass the southern end of Biggie Island. After a very long day we head into the shallow Boomerang Bay on Biggie Island for the night. this morning uh, after spending quite a rolly night on the anchor. Um, the cruising guide describes this anchorage as a bit rolly and it certainly is but you know, it was okay. Um, we had an eventful day yesterday. We sailed 35 miles and uh, conditions varied from 0 to 20 knots and we had about six hours of wind against tide after leaving it uh, just before five in the morning um, to catch the outgoing tide out of Port Nelson at least. Um, and it made it quite uncomfortable, but the ringer handled it all, took it all in her stride. Um, we saw a couple of whales on the way, which was really nice, uh, although it makes you a little bit nervous, especially when you're in really rough conditions. The uh, a whale that's close could be something that's really nice, but it could also be something that's a bit dangerous as well, but no, 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 no problems there. Um, <coughs> when we arrived, unfortunately, when we were setting the anchor, the dinghy rope got into the propeller and uh, tangled around our uh, motor's propeller so that took a bit of time to untangle and get off again because the motor is quite difficult to lift out of the well. Uh, today we're going to be moving on to Wherry Bay a little bit further up the coast of Biggie Island uh, and having a look at some Aboriginal art and uh, ceremonial sites and uh, maybe a burial site. Um, after which we'll probably move on to Prudhoe Island which is an only another seven miles around the corner and the tide will be in the right direction at that stage uh, for a nice sheltered anchorage for the night. Anyway. We'll see how we go. And this is Helen wrapping up the delicious chocolate cake she's just made on our metho stove. Absolutely brilliant. So hey, admit it when you're clever. All I need to do is work out how to use glad wrap, mine in technical detail. <laughs> and we've decided to start using our water maker a bit now. Um, it gets a little bit hard when the r r r uh, water sources are a bit far from the dinghy and you've got to carry it over lots of rocks and things and risk breaking your leg. So this is our water maker going. As you can hear, it's quite a noisy unit, but you get used to it after a while. And to fill the jerry can down here, it takes about four hours. We pass the aptly named Tooth Rock and for a while we are kept company by a whale paralleling our course.
We are passed by one of the largest cruise ships that we saw on our trip. We anchor in Wherry Bay and are joined by the prawn trawler Levique. We chat with the crew on the beach and before they leave they give us a bag of fresh banana prawns. We were often touched by the kindness and generosity of the people that we met along the way on our trip. Wherry Bay is well known for its extensive rock art depicting the Wanjina spirit beings and the food animals of the time. The geology of Biggie Island is less spectacular than the coast further to the west, but it is host to many interesting caves and passages. Some of the art records the early interactions between Europeans and the indigenous tribes with images of boats and strange figures with pipes in their mouths. The shoreline of Wherry Bay is lined with interesting rock formations, which we are told are of cu cultural significance to the local indigenous people. With the tide turning, we catch the ebb tide to the east towards Prito Island and Shelter Bay. top of Biggie Island uh, behind us there and we're heading over to Prudo Island up ahead and uh, should be a nice sheltered anchorage overnight and like all tides, or not like all tides, but like a lot of tides in the Kimberleys, the ebb tide flows east and north and the flood tides flow south and west. Not a, not to say, there are exceptions to that rule, but that's a general rule. And we came across the top of Biggie Island on an ebb tide, and we've still got current behind us pushing us over to Prudhoe Island. So, should be there soon, hopefully. <laughs> The well-named Shelter Bay nestles amongst the Prudhoe Islands with nearly 360 degrees protection from wind and seas. After some time ashore on the beach, we retire to Naringa for a delicious meal of fresh fish and barbecued prawns as the day fades away to the west. <laughs> 